Friend. 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 Oh, friend. Torso friend. Torso friend. Torso friend. Ginger. And Charlotte's here for some reason. Yeah. I'm here for moral support to make everybody else feel better. That's fair enough. Is that my yes. Jeez. everyone and welcome back to the BUKC from the perspective of the Swansea University Motorsport team and welcome to Clandale Park where it is illegal to park within one metre of the perimeter fence. If you do park within one metre of the perimeter fence you get your balls chopped off. It's just the way it goes. This is the first time in three years that we've been to Clandale Park or Landau if you're from the southeast of England and I have to say it was really nice for us to be able to sleep in our own bed although this is possibly a point that Ben took a little bit too far as he decided to stay up until 3am the night before going out and getting drunk giving himself a massive hangover and the title of being an absolute Absolute melt. <laughs> Was that a goat in the car with Ben? Hmm. Anyway, there haven't been any driver changes, so let's just have a quick look at the standings before we get into the action. You'll notice in the old guard, it is getting very spicy between Ben and Adam as Adam moves to within three points of Ben's total. And Ben, having raced in two more races than myself and Adam, his average is the worst of the three of us, although I can't exactly speak for my total. It is going to take something Herculean for me to overcome them and I just don't think that's going to happen. In terms of last year's mob, it is as you were with Ryan leading from Jeremy, leading from Derek, leading from P-Dubs. The only real point of interest is that Derek's average is now slightly better than P-Dubs, admittedly by only 0.1 of a point, but got to take the bad of the good, I suppose. And finally, just a quick shout out to Roman, whose average has continued to come down, but he was helped by that really good endurance race with Adam, so his total is looking quite respectful for someone who's done six races. Finally, it is worth giving a shout out to two of our Swansea drivers who are racing for Southampton C. One of them is Piotr Brzezinski, who you may remember from Buckmore. He's been able to secure himself a main seat. And we also welcome to the BUKC Mr. Joshua Holmes, who only literally just got his BUKC race license and he's just jumped in to the deep end with the Southampton C team. So we'll see how they got on in their races. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to field start here, I'm going to go running over there. A very good point. If you want to check out the Three Sisters video, do be sure to do so. But for now, we can't worry about Three Sisters because this race is underway. As we see those guys going through, we're looking for P-Dubs. He's in this race for the B team. I can't remember where he was starting because I forgot to check it. But there you see him just going through the first corner. He's heading through the second part of the corner now. So we're going to enact what I call Operation Fucking Neow over to the other side of the fence to get the rest of the start. And here we go. Yes, it looks like I have just about got the hang of it. It looks like 32 there has got in front of 40. Form. We're looking for P-Dubs coming through the field. There's a man on the grass, but I can't I, I can't see P-Dubs. P-Dubs? Has anyone seen the P-Dubs? Has anyone found my P-Dubs? He's not there. Surely Operation Fucking Neow didn't actually miss the thing that we wanted to see in the first place, which was P-Dubs slammed into the front of a wall. And there he is. Here he is. He's been slammed into a wall. And not only did he get slammed into a wall, he ended up with his cart so broken, he actually had to walk back to the pits because, well, it was it was absolutely shafted. There is no video of said crash, but yeah, just really unfortunate to see. I never really seen that before. Oh, look, there's Sue's from, from Aston. Hmm. But yeah, off P-Dubs goes. The lonely walk down to the paddock. And uh, that was basically the end of his race he was held for 10 minutes 10 minutes that's an excessive amount of time he then went out and obviously finished in last place so that's two last places in a row for p-dubs this year so now we're going to cut on board to race two we've got myself starting in p29 for the a team and jeremy's just in front of me starting in p23 for the b team and we're already getting this race underway you can see there's a man in a very blue helmet and jeremy's already going for the lunch on him bit of contact there probably a bit of an argy bargy situation but it looks like there is more argy bargy going on as jeremy goes to the outside of turn two that's me on the left there's, there's an absolute pandemonium there's a man in the air absolutely crazy start you can see there i have just got past jeremy and as we're now heading into what a corner that i believe is called 30s i don't 
don't really know any of the names of these corners. You can see Jeremy has actually been able to hold his ground through Surtees. So now we're heading through the right hand. Again, I don't know the name of this corner, but you can see there I am fighting with those guys in front. So now let's have a look at the start from my perspective. I get a little bit of a slow getaway. You can already see that man in the beautifully colored helmet as is getting past me. But I am going to go to the outside like Jeremy. But unlike Jeremy, I'm now going to cut to the inside. That's where you can see that I've been able to make the plays up on Jeremy. But that's almost where it cost me. I get into a real pandemonium with that man. You see that's the guy on the grass. But you see Pietro just in front. He was starting for Southampton C. And now we're heading into Surtees. As we know, I was able to keep Jeremy at bay. And it's actually quite an uneventful bit into this turn. Or else am I going to go for an overtake into the right hander? It doesn't look like it. So we're now going to cut back on board to Jeremy. You can see here, it looks like he's going to go for something audacious into the section that I like to call the Rumbly Wumblies. And also see there's a man going through the grass. That's definitely a corner cut. But Jeremy navigating his way perfectly through the Wumbly Wumblies. Now he is going for a move on this man in the red shoulder pads. Actually, no, this man's going for a really audacious move on me through that chicane. And now we're heading into the hairpin, which I know the name of this corner. It's called Raymond. And from now on, I'm going to be referring to it as Captain Raymond Holt. <laughs> Cool. I'm sure we'll see plenty more of Raymond as this video goes on, but for now we're back on board with myself heading into the second lap, and it looks like I'm going to go something very ambitious into that part of the first corner, and that has cost me as now Jeremy is going to be able to go round the outside as we head into Raymond. Am I going to fight back? Yes, I am. You can just see my front wing there, and I'm going to force Jeremy as far out as is possible onto the grass even, and as we come into the next bit of the right-hander, he's forced me off a little bit and got the place back, giving a tap on his helmet as well to let me know that he is there. I know you're there, Jeremy. You sort of forced me off the track, and Jeremy go for something audacious, but it looks like it's not going to work out. Is he going to spin round? Actually, no, he's going to perform a hell of a sweet power slide, but that has cost him as I now make up the place, and that, if we see here, that is an epic power slide from Jeremy, but that is not the fastest way to go around the corner, and, I get, and I'm able to get the place done. But a fantastic another little fight there between myself and Jeremy. Speaking of Jeremy, he then went on to get overtaken by this man with the green chevrons on the back of his helmet. That was a Premier driver as well, and now he's getting into a fight with that man from earlier who tried to overtake me out of the Rumbly Wumblies as we just came out of Raymond and now we're heading into turn one. Is that, is that the man? Yes it is. So Jeremy being overtaken by that man with the red shoulder pads is now heading, I think that's, we're now in a different part of the track. Yes we are. There's a very seamless edit and it's a very seamless overtake from Jeremy coming out of the right hander. I'd love to know the name of that one but I just don't. As for myself, I went about having a very, very good race indeed. I was climbing from 29th so here we go coming into Raymond. Velvet. Thunder. As I go for a difficult overtake around the outside, that's an audacious move for a happen. but now it looks like I've got a decent drive on this man in the white helmet and black suit. Very bad colour combination, but it looks like I've got a decent line coming into the second part of the first corner, and I've got that move done. Bish, bash, bosh, and now here we have a bit of footage of Pietro Brzezinski racing for Southampton C as we're coming into the right-hander, whose name I don't know, and it's almost a simple switchback as I get past Pietro, bish, bash, bosh once again. And now we're on board with Jeremy. He is now coming up to Pier 3. And this is what I love about the BKC. Four wide, heading into a place that is by no means wide enough for four cars, but it looks like they've all come to their senses. We now head through the Rumbly Wumblies. It looks like that is the man from earlier on the outside of Jeremy. Jeremy says, see you later. And now is heading down the back straight. We head into Raymond. And that was Pietro pulling off. He, he thought he got a black flag. It wasn't his cart number, so he was just a bit of a div. And now we're coming back out of Raymond. It looks like there's somebody there with a helmet akin to Adam's. I've told you before about what it's like to copy Adam. I'm not happy about it. But Jeremy doing some very good defensive work as we come into the first corner. And is Jeremy going to be able to hold on to this place? It looks like he is for now as we head down towards 30s. So we're going to cut away immediately as we're now heading down through the chicane and heading into Raymond. I'm a poet and didn't even know I was rhyming those words. And Jeremy gets a fantastic overtake done there. But no, it looks like he's overcooked it slightly. And that has allowed not one, but two people in white helmets and black suits. And it looks like, is this the Adam replica? Yes, it is. So Jeremy losing a couple of positions there. Elsewhere, we're back on board with me. It looks like I'm going to get some vengeance for Jeremy as we head back into Raymond. Three pounds! And I get the move done. But no, the man has come back at me. And it looks like I'm about to get mugged off there. And yes, I have by that man in the yellow helmet. But fortunately, man in yellow helmet has helped me out get past the man in the white helmet. And Jeremy just went about getting mugged off a little bit as he fell further down the order and just to add insult to injury there goes a man in a white helmet that's not the man I was looking for here's the man that I'm looking for it's the man with the red stripes the fight that had been going on all race and eventually man in red stripes did win as for me I got overtaken by that man from earlier with the green chevrons on the back of his suit and I slowly began to fall back but as we come onto the final lap it's absolute controversy as the man with the green chevrons has had an instant with the University of Leeds and I've got the momentum heading down into the 30s and I've made that place back up 
So it is a very, very good drive from me as I come home to finish P19 on the road, but thanks to some penalties, I ended up in P17. And as for Jeremy, he was all the way down in P31, but still a decent drive, decent bit of defending, and he did the best he could. And here is me congratulating Yusuf, or Yusuf congratulating me on a decent drive. We had a little bet going on, but I will go into in more detail later. But for now, we are coming into Adam's race. And you can see here, this is Adam going for something really audacious around the outside. It looks like he's got a really good job. Let's just hope that nothing bad can happen from here on in. Bye. Uh, I think I got a bit of it. Yeah, I did. I got 97 taking his foot off a brake and rolling back into the oncoming pack, leaving Adam with another broken wheel. That's two carts for two teams in three races. That's ridiculous. But not as ridiculous as leaving your foot off the brake and reversing into the oncoming field. That is just quite frankly appalling. How can you possibly race in the BUKC mains and get away with that, not know what to do that? And what's also a little bit, actually no, not a little bit, really irritating, Adam got exactly the same penalty as him. 10 minute delay. That man shouldn't have been allowed to race again in, as far as I'm concerned that day. I'm not one to be bitter, I'm not one to call people out, but I'm calling that 97 out absolutely ridiculous and just, you left Adam with a fat hand as well. We were doing really well. P17, if Adam, Adam was going to really capitalise on that as well, probably get a top 20, maybe he Borderline top 10, just uh, absolutely ridiculous, really frustrated me that, and really irritated. The only good bit of that is that I got the whole thing on camera. Normally I am completely useless when it comes to filming things with the camera, but this time I got it spot on. So I suppose you've got to take it with the good. Adam would come in P35, nothing really to report. But anyway, let's move on from Mr. Grumpy Gills as we go to Roman, who is starting from P16 for the A-Team, and for some reason this was the angle I chose to record from for this bit. Roman would have a very solid race. He was running in the top 10 towards the beginning, but he slowly began to fall back. It should be noted that Roman isn't very good at tracks that he doesn't know. He tends to take a while to get going, but once he gets going, he is ace. So we had another, another couple of little spicy shots of Roman, but um, as is sort of the theme, there, there, there is a little backhand to this because um, Roman was involved in a slight incident with our, my fellow BUKC reporter Yusuf. This is actually Yusuf's onboard right here. You can see him here chasing the beautifully held, the beautiful suit of Mr. Roman Haskett. And he's just got an overtake there and now heading through the chicane into, into Raymond. And you'd think that Yusuf was going to go through here nice and easy, but no, he's got a massive whack. And who was that giving him a massive whack? Of course, it was Mr. Roman Haskett. And how that wasn't a black flag, I will never know. I watched the whole thing live actually, didn't have the camera recording. And he didn't get a black flag for it. Absolutely amazing, really was. But um, yeah, he would come in P13, so now we leave it to Ryan to deliver a very good result for us. Maybe even get us on the podium. So now we're on board with Mr. James Derrick, who I believe is actually starting in P13. You just saw me there hurriedly trying to get the camera turned on. And now we're heading into the start of this race. So Derek starting behind that man in the, actually we can't really see because his camera angle is really pointed down, but it's not quite bad enough to be called the front of Derek's cart. But Derek getting a decent start, a little bit of argy but he's just going for a lunge down the inside of that man in the maroon jumper. And now he's having a go at Andreas Goodsold, Suzanne's brother, who I was having a very good fight with at the qualifiers. I will mention again, but Derek has been now been overtaken by the man in the, I'm going to say maroon, but it could also be claret. I'm not entirely sure on my colours these days. But now that, oh, actually no, Derek's just been massively forced off by, I think that might have been Piers Pryor from Loughborough and Derek being truly mugged off here as we now head into the right hander again I don't know the name of that corner and Derek being overtaken once again but there's a man on the grass that looked to be Dale Stevens of the Warwick team and now Derek going through the rumbly wumblies and there's there's a lot of argy bargy going on here and Derek fortunately has been able to successfully navigate the rumbly wumblies without getting knocked off so now he's going to have a go at this man in the actually I don't particularly like this helmet colour but we'll, 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 we'll go for it Derek giving the, the gesture to keep going but he has been overtaken by that man in the black helmet coming out of Raymond. BRB, what does it even mean? Be right back. It is the same number of syllables as the acronym. What's the point? As for Ryan, he got a decent start as we head through the right hander. Ryan knows this track like the back of his hand as we head into the right hander. Ryan keeping those two at bay behind him. Are we going to see an overtaking maneuver? Yes, we are, but from the people that are behind Ryan, not the not Ryan himself, and Ryan now losing a host of places. So both Ryan and Derek dropping back at the start. So we're back 
on board with Derek heading into the Rumbly Wumblies and it looks like he's going to get an overtake on that man in the blue suit. It's actually a very nice suit indeed and now he's stuck behind this man in all black. So now we're coming out of the Rumbly Wumblies and we're heading towards the chicane and then shortly into Raymond and it looks like Derek has already got the move done heading into Raymond. Bish bash bosh and it's I'm leaving this in here because this is Derek trying to have a go at Janetta Man from Birmingham. Like you don't have a go at Janetta Man. Leave Janetta Man alone. But Derek now having a good fight with that man in black from a little bit early and looks like there's going to be some spicy moves coming in here and he's going to the inside of the first part of the first, second part of the first corner sorry and now there, uh, there's more there's more spicy action going on I, I can't even keep up with what's going on but Derek keeping his own for the moment he's going to keep him on the outside is Derek going to be held onto the position yes he is for now but as we come out of the right hander we're now going to go back into the other right hander a lap later and Derek has lost that place to the man in the black helmet speaking of black comes to Ryan whilst he is in a Tony Kart suit which means that he should know what he's doing he did unfortunately get a black flag in this race going for a maneuver a little bit like that one but it didn't quite pay off and that one was a, a bang to rights black flag so we will move on from Ryan's race and back on board with Derek as we come out of the rumbly wumblies it looks like he's going to try and follow Dale Stevens through on this man from the University of Leeds through the chicane and it is a simple case of bish bash bosh and he's passed that man from the University of Leeds and here we go this is a lovely bit of team play as Josh Holmes from the from Swansea but racing the University of Southampton lets his photo oh, hang on no, okay, okay, no, okay, Josh is going to try and race Derek coming into the right-hander. In fact, Josh has now got past Derek, and now we're heading to the Rumbly Wumblies, but Josh taking up a very defensive line, driving in the very middle of the track and really getting in the way of Derek. I'm sure that will make Derek happy. Derek Rage, I love it. Anyway, Derek does eventually get past Josh, and I think that was Josh just trying to get his elbows out, just trying to get a bit of racing action, but maybe not fully understanding that we're trying to go on and get decent results in these races. That's our friend from Aston, Tom OBEE, -E, getting past Derek as we come in, out of the right hander. Derek looking for something spicy on Tom OBEE, -E, but we're not going to see that as we come onto the final lap. Derek really pushing now for some unknown reason, and that's always going to go wrong as he spins around. And shall we have a listen to this with the audio on? I think we should have a listen to this with the audio on. Sometimes it is genuinely hard to get these recordings done without laughing, but I've just about composed myself to say that that pitiful no was so pitiful from Derek, he really needs to work on it. And I think it's time that Derek be exploited, because I haven't exploited Derek for a while. So coming up are a couple of examples of how Derek can improve the way of saying no. I hope you've learned something there, Derek, you silly goose. Anyway, actually, it can't be too hard on Derek because he did actually get a very good finish of P20. And as for Ryan, he was down in P33 with that black flag. So once again for the A team, it's a case of what could have been as we finish. I don't know where. We'll come on to that in a bit. As we finish this sprint races off with Ben, who's still drunk and starting in P8 for the B team as we get this race underway. Ben tucking in behind that man in the very nice red and blue helmet as he comes to the inside. Now Ben going to the outside. He's also forced that man out of the way, but he's now been overtaken by that man who is very high viz now coming out of the first corner and now heading down towards Surtees heading through there Ben keeping position for the moment tucking in behind the high viz man as we head into the right hander whose name I don't know Ben going for an audacious move into the right hander whose name I don't know and now it looks like Ben has got that move done and dust as we head down into the other right hander whose name I don't know and we're now going to cut away coming out of the rumbly wumblies looks like Ben is having a go at this man at the University of Leeds but no he's been out dragged by that man from the University of Leeds now getting overtaken by a man in a yellow and red suit don't see that kind of combination on too much but uh, Ben's just gone for something truly ambitious into Raymond he's now been overtaken that by that man in the high viz suit and helmet and now he looks like he's been overtaken by a man in a white helmet and black suit Ben gesticulating a bit as per normal as he normally does and there we go he's been overtaken by a man in a very orange helmet that's actually quite a nice helmet indeed I think we might have seen him at the qualifiers is that the Tiger Man I think it is indeed but now Ben it looks like he's going to get a good slingshot out of the rumbly wumblies on the Tiger Man and he does indeed get that overtake done heading into the chicane but now we're going to cut away and Ben has in fact been overtaken by that man in the Tiger helmet into the first corner. Now we're heading into Surtees. Ben getting overtaken there by not one but two people wearing white helmets. And now, oh my god, that looks to be the entire population of Andorra going down the outside of Ben, heading into the right hander whose name I don't know. And it looks like he's being overtaken once again. But there's the man in the red and blue helmet as we now come into the other right hander whose name I don't know. But now we're coming out of Rumbly Wumblies. It looks like Ben is going to go for an audacious move on that man into the chicane. But no, it looks like Ben not getting it done now. But as we head into Raymond. Bones! It looks like Ben 
has got the move done, but no, there is some gesticulation there, and Ben getting into a bit of a hoo-ha with some people coming down the inside into the first corner. No, Ben fights them off, and now we're being overtaken by not one, but two people in exactly identical race where Ben gesticulating massively. I don't really know why it looked like to be a fair. Oh my god, that is a third man in a fully white suit and helmet combination. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Come on, boys. Like, get some originality, for God's sake. Anyway, we're now coming out of the second corner. Ben properly forcing that man off, but does the descent gentlemanly thing and lets him back through. That is going to cost him as now finally we get us a bit of some alterations in colour as that man in the black suit goes past. That's Nick from Aston, or formerly from Aston. Ben getting even more Larry as we, there's the man from the grey and red suit from earlier trying to get down the inside of Ben. Coming into the right hand, whose name I don't know. We're now coming out of the right hand, whose name I don't know. Going into other right hand, whose name I don't know. That man in the grey suit and red chevrons has now got past, and there's someone from the University of Leeds getting past Ben as well as we come down to the Rumbly Wumblies. Ben getting a bit of breaking in there. Is he going to be able to get a good slingshot out of the Rumbly Wumblies? It doesn't look like it for the moment but man in red and grey suit has got a bit of a bad exit and now we're coming down towards Raymond and is Ben going to go for something audacious? We're lining it up. We're lining up. Ben's going for it. Ben's going to do it. Is he going to do it? Don't get mugged off coming out of Raymond but no Ben has not been mugged off coming out of Raymond and now we're coming out of Raymond towards the end of this race. You can just see there a photo finish between high viz man and man in red and blue helmet and that was the end of Ben's race he finished in P23 dropping down from P8 and overall the Swansea teams did not very well the A team were in P38 and as for the B team they were down in P45 but we're coming into the endurances which is where we seemingly this year go a bit better than in the sprint races so hopefully we can deliver some good results and it is into those endurances we now go, but before we get there, we find this absolute monstrosity of a fashion clash as both me, Ryan, and Roman all have the same boots, the boots that are so white they need to check their own privilege. It is, of course, the Adidas white and green boots, but now we head into endurance one, and it was me and Roman in this race. We were starting in P24, and we just see Roman heading through the start phase there, but this is the only footage that exists off the start because I had to go out and get ready for my stint. But as Roman comes into the bits, he's gone too fast, and he so nearly hits the fuel barrels. We have to roll him back. It's almost incredible that we didn't get sent out against the Roman really sort of letting the side down there with that with that instead I think we were running in P14 at that moment but I get sent on my way and this is where the rain came down as you saw that man spinning and it was all about keeping it on track and trying to have a bit of pace as well and that is exactly what I was able to do we just saw me getting past that man through the right hand whose name I don't know getting past that man and there's a spinner going through there that's something that again wanted to avoid and I didn't avoid indeed as we come through into the chicane we just saw a little bit of a bump there who could be so cruel as give me a bump through a corner, it was of course Suzanne from Aston, absolutely appalled with her behaviour, giving her the middle finger. It, admittedly, there was absolutely no point for that. I've also been overtaken by that man in the white helmet and blue suit. So that was sort of the main bits of highlights from my race. I give the thumbs up to come into the pits, and that's exactly what I do. That's someone turning the cart off for me, and that's where the footage of this endurance does end. Unfortunately, we did end up in P25, so we dropped a place. That was unfortunate. That was I'm going to have to say it. That was down to Roman. He sort of let the side down there uh, with some. I think he got a cone penalty or no no it was it was it was curb penalty um, so yeah, that was really disappointing. I should just mention that because I went on a bit too much in the sprint races, I have cut down on these endurance races. I do apologise for that, but um, I'm not really actually bothered what anyone thinks. So um, yeah, we'll just move on from that into Endurance 2 where I believe the track conditions could be described as changeable they weren't quite dry but they weren't quite wet but here we go into this race Jeremy starting in P20 for the B team Adam's just in front of him in P13 for the A team and Jeremy going going a little bit cautious into turn 1 there's a man spinning in the middle of the track and Jeremy sticking to the inside this time as opposed to the outside in his sprint races he's been overtaken by that man in the orange helmet but certainly Jeremy getting a much better start than in this Endurance than in the sprints he's getting overtaken by a man in all black looks like he's playing for the New Zealand rugby team as well as racing in the BUKC and Jeremy coming through the inside of he looks like he's got a bit of a run on someone, but he's being mugged off a little bit around the outside of the right-hander whose name I don't know. It looks like he's lost a place now as we head down towards the right-hander whose other name I do not know. We're going to see anything spicy happen here. Yes, it looks like somebody else is about to overtake. There's another man in all black. There looks to be three all blacks. That's the entire front row of the all black scrum line. As now Jeremy getting an overtake done on that man in the orange helmet. Jenny looks like he's going to have a go on one of the props from the New Zealand rugby team into the Rumbly Wumblies. There's a man in a white helmet that's the New Zealand football team the all whites and now we're heading out of the Rumble Wumblies Jeremy getting that overtake done on the man in the all white and now we're heading into Raymond but we're coming no no we're gonna cut immediately to the pit stop although there is actually a bit of there's that there one of the all blacks is going across the grass at the Rumble Wumblies so now Jeremy going to get a bit of an exit 
on that man in the all black and also on the man with the red chevrons on the back of his suit that Jeremy was racing in the sprint. So we're coming through the chicane. Jeremy going to be going into the pits, but is it? No, please. Oh, that was so close to a bit of argy bargy. But now we're heading into the pit lane and our pit stops have been eh so far this year, but now they are going to be amazing as you would now see. Proper implementation of the Alistair Irvine technique there and a big shout out to Suzanne picking up the camera to film the A-team's pit stop. They were going great guns, they were potentially on for a class win so we're going to come back to them in a bit but for now we're going to see what happened in Derek's little stint then actually not a lot happened here. We have Thomas Fox overtaking De Derek in his Red Bull helmet, the one he uses for wet weather racing. Here's Derek getting an overtake on someone in a black helmet as we come out of Raymond and they're coming out of Raymond again, De Derek giving an interesting signal for the pit stops and we're going to see another fantastic pit stop right here. Absolutely superb once again for the pit stops. Not a lot happened in Jeremy's final stint apart from this little fight with Tom OBEE from Aston. So we're going to stick on board here, see if Jeremy can get an overtake done on Tom OBEE. Tom OBEE looks like he's going to go down on a, for an overtake on that man in the white helmet. Jeremy going to the outside, see if he can get anything spicy coming out of the right hand, whose name I don't know, but he's actually hit Tom OBEE and that brought an end to this fight. So we are going to cut back to the A team who are in a proper fight for the clubman lead just behind Kingston. They're just getting overtaken by a man who is a Premier driver, Ryan getting a bit annoyed by the fact that Premier is overtaking him, but that means that Adam has got potential to come through on Kingston. You see him there, two Premiers overtaking Kingston. So now Adam directly behind the man from Kingston. This could be absolutely superb, but you can see there, there is a Premier once again behind Adam, so we really don't want that Premier to muck up Adam's race, but if he is going to overtake him, please overtake Kingston directly after. So there goes the Premier down the inside of Adam into into Surtees as we're now heading into the right hand. He's never done, no, Adam looking for something, but the Premier is going for something on Kingston and this is surely going to give an opportunity for Adam to overtake Kingston. Are we going to see anything superb? Come on! Yes! Yes! Yeah! Now calm it down! Calm down! Ladies and gentlemen, Adam fucking Pew. Absolutely brilliant and all of that took place on the final lap giving us P10 and a class win for the Clubmans in that race. Finally the A team have delivered a good result. Vindication! Vindication indeed and vindication for the B team as well as Derek and Jeremy delivered a fantastic P21. Admittedly a one place down from where they started but that gives Ben and P-Dubs who's starting in the higher up race a very good opportunity to deliver a good result. Yeah no, I'm doing 22 minutes. I'm done. I'm doing 22 minutes stuff. I don't want to start. So, whatever. Yeah, that was Ben taking it upon himself to decide how long his stint was going to be. Something I'm not a fan of, but something I am a fan of is a double overtake into the right hand, whose name I don't know. So, we're coming into the right hand, whose other name I do not know. And Ben, is he going to get any overtaking done here? Well, that white man in the white helmet might be doing an overtake. It looks like Ben is also going to try another double overtake. And it looks like he has indeed, as that man in the white helmet runs wide as we head now into the Rumbly Wumbly. So, Ben getting a very good start from P16. I think there was a man off on the grass there. It looks like, is Ben going to go for something audacious into the third part of the Rumbly Wumblies? Yes, he is. So, actually, a fantastic start from the man who is still drunk at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Looks like he's also lining up something on that man in the yellow helmet. That man in the yellow helmet getting a bit of wheel spin. And now Ben going to the outside of Raymond. And has he got the move done? It looks like it for the moment. But no, there's the front wing of the man in the yellow helmet. But Ben getting a little bit of a bump up. And it looks like that place has been won. So actually a very good lap from Ben as we head now into the first corner. And we cut away from the first corner. And that's Ben getting overtaken by the man who gave us the inspiration for the pit stops. And you can just see here coming out of, the, out of Raymond. Just see how much it is raining now the rooster tails coming off the back of the wheels with that man in the red helmet as we come into the first corner and is there anything spicy going to happen here no it is not and actually whilst it was a decent start i have to say 
Ben's battery died, so um, we lost all footage for the rest of that race. And as you might have seen how much it was raining, I opted to stay in the car for the remainder of this race. You just see there, p -Dubs holding up a man from a Premier team beautifully there. p was actually driving superbly for a man who hasn't actually raced much today. He, obviously, his race got cut short at the start. Now, he's, here we go, see p -Dubs having a fight with this man. That man running him properly. Well, that is absolutely ridiculous. That's ridiculously wide. It looks like p -Dubs is going to get the cut back on that man who just ran him ridiculously wide as we head down into the right hand. He's now I don't know, that man has completely fallen by the wayside, and that is where the footage for this day does sadly end. I am sorry about that, but blame the weather. If you were there, you'd know how much it was actually racing. Overall, in round six, both of our teams had absolutely fantastic results, finishing P25 and P26, respectfully. The A team were nine points off a podium, and hopefully we can carry that form into Wilton, and hopefully the B team can as well. A track that we all know quite well, almost like the back of our hands, but not quite. In terms of the overall championship standings though it is looking grim for the A team as we currently sit in P40 and if we are, are unable to bring anything together for Wilton that will result in our worst finish ever even worse than the time when we didn't actually have any proper drivers or certainly drivers akin to the likes of Roman and Ryan obviously Adrian was a very good driver but we just didn't deliver that year so to finish worse than second year would be a tragedy but we are going to attract that we know as for the B team they are sitting in P44 and I think during my entire time at Swansea, the B team's numbers have been 43, 44, 42, 42. So we are looking at another solid result in the 40s. Could we even see a top 40? That would be something superb, but I think that something's going to have to go very well for us. But I really hope that both teams can deliver superb results. So this is as we are going into what is my final weekend, as well as the final weekends of Ben and Adam. Lot faithful servants of Swansea, but obviously we will also be saying goodbye to probably this format of video we are working on finding a suitable replacement to carry on the videos going forward into next year but it's going to be quite emotional saying goodbye to the BUKC saying goodbye to these videos so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you made it this far in as well because I really do appreciate every single person that watches these through in their entirety I know that Mr Thomas Fox is a big fan the guys Howard and Andrew they're really big fans and I just hope and again anyone watching this far in thank you so much it's been a blast let's hope the final video and the final range round goes perfectly and that is it for now. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And all that is left for me to say now is ta-ta and farewell.